Good afternoon, everybody. This is Chuck with Chicago Area Roof Talk. And uh, our guest with us here is Joe P., my co-host. He's popping up here with us. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Joe. Hello, everybody. Uh, I run the commercial and industrial division here at Peterson Roofing, Inc. in Mount Prospect, Illinois. And uh, that's pretty much it. Chuck's been my partner for since I've been about 12 years old. So... Here we are. <laughs> That's okay, it. Okay, Chris, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, so I'm the managing partner of Advanced Building Products Chicago. We're the Carlisle reps here, Carlisle Syntec specifically. I've uh, been in the single ply roofing game for about 15 years now. Started my career with Syntec directly as a field inspector and kind of worked my way up through the different ranks and been back in Chicago land here since 2022. And uh, yeah, happy to be happy to be part of our Chicago area roof talk. This is pretty cool. Definitely. Yeah, we really appreciate having you here. Yeah, yeah okay. Chris, I know you've been uh, in the uh, you know the game, the roofing industry for quite a long time. For a little while now. Yeah, a little yeah, while. Great uh, starting to come. Yeah, I miss our, <laughs> I miss the good old days when you were up on the roofs inspecting know, it with man. us. You know, Some days, sometimes I miss those days myself. That's right. A day like man. today, right? Beautiful day out. So beautiful day. Appreciate you guys having me on here to talk a little shop. You got it, Chris. Go ahead, Chuck. Okay, we're gonna start the uh, little short little video, and then we're gonna pause it in between uh, sections to go to the next section. So we'll start out with that first one, and then we will talk about it a little bit. Cool. there yeah so that's that's just showing uh carlisle's rapid lock fleece back epdm uh which is which is a hook and loop attachment system and and yes it's made by velcro so uh, it really allows you to install that sheet quickly no temperature restrictions no adhesives at all involved with it and, and it, as you guys can see in that clip it's it's really quick i mean just over six minutes on that single sheet install you're not waiting on flash off times that kind of stuff and, and what we actually see is tremendous uplift performance uh, out of that product itself and uh you know, really as fast as you guys can lay it down there's, there's no hanging around and waiting and, and it's pretty right. simple, pretty simple to do a quick 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 question chris about that sure. system um I know it's like so it's like the fleece back sticks to the insulations like the uh, velcro material exactly what it is you yep. peel and it sticks now let me ask you this let's say you got you know uh you know a 10 by 100 and you're going to peel it and say a big wind comes mm -hmm. grabs the sheet and sticks it down in the wrong spot where it's sure. not wanted to then what sure. happens yeah so if if you haven't walked on it hit it with a roller or broomed it you may be able to move it a little bit you can kind of you might be able to pick it up and adjust it a little bit uh, once you get any weight on it to speak of it's going to be stuck man right it, it does come with a, a release liner from the factory so a lot of guys are familiar with like a peel and stick pressure sensitive sheet an adhesive backed sheet same basic concept so it'll have a two-part release liner on it you can kind of see in that video the guy's pulling the release liner out so yeah like i really like that man pretty cool it's pretty slick and and as long as you uh get it put where you want before you pull the release liner you, you know, you, you can really just kind of position however you want to. But once you pull that release liner and hit it with a broom or a roller, it's really not going anywhere. So you just got to be a little bit careful during those uh, situations. But the nice thing, in my opinion, is makes it a little bit better than the SA is that it's not going to stick to itself. Right. So if it folds right. or if it folds back or something funny happens, it's just fleece fleece backed membrane. So it's not you're not going to lose that corner or ruin that corner. Uh, but like you say, Joe, once it's down, it's down, man. Yeah, it's down. Yep. You got to be a professional to 
So it no sounds doubt. like that product would be great for a customer that's looking for, you know, like, you know, very, very good long-term roof. Yep. And I also see where that could save on, uh, like you said, it might be a little more costly material, mm -hmm. but it might save on labor time where it's there so you have fast. Uh, if you've got something that's open, like relatively open, as fast as you can roll out sheets and as fast as you can roll a weighted roller, that's how fast you can put it down. Something we need to look into, Chuck. There you go. Yeah, it sounds that way. Definitely. Pretty cool stuff. And I know that I'm pretty sure you guys are the only one that uh, has that kind of product on the uh, Yeah, we're the only ones that have it on the marketplace right now. So on, on like a public job, we're running into a little bit of obstacles, right? We can't really get it specced when there's no other alternatives to it. Right. But where we see it be really effective, private negotiator projects, uh, hospitals or any other occupied buildings, schools oftentimes. Oh, I can definitely see hospitals and stuff. There's no adhesive. Yeah, so there's no VOCs, no smell, no nothing. And then the other the other side of things is that, like, as you guys all know, as you as we work into the winter, all those fully adhere projects, people look look for ways to keep them rolling once the temperature drops low enough that you can't use adhesives anymore. Uh, you're oftentimes switching it to a mechanically attached, a ballasted, or a rhino bond. This, you've got basically the same uh, appearance as far as an attachment method. You know, still that nice, fully adhered, that nice, tight look. But you've got no temperature restrictions because you're not using Man, it. Man, that's funny you say that, Chris. Yeah, that's we a good point. just talking about a job that we got coming up in about a month or two. Mm -hmm. It's a gyp deck, full tear off, uh, you know, R30 set in low rise, and then mm -hmm. fully adhered membrane. But now we're going to have to think about switching the system to something else. We're probably right. going to think about hot mopping the ISO. Yeah. Well, and fully adhering the membrane. Yep. But this is a perfect situation where I could call this owner and say look i got this product what do you think yeah you could you could hot mop all those layers of insulation and then just use the the rapid lock uh insulation board on top and then rock and roll yeah you can excellent you can map the rapid uh, lock board on top yeah you could it, so we make that board in like a half inch hd uh two inch flat two and a half inch flat so you got some options as far as what you want your top layer to be and how you can build your assembly Very beautiful good. Yeah, I like it. Pretty a cool lot. stuff, man. It's uh, I think it's like the, it's the coolest, definitely the sexiest thing we've got going right. Yeah, now. for sure. <laughs> for for sure. I think I have cool. one sample pretty of cool. it in my office somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome, man. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I know we've been to. I think you had a seminar on it uh, a while back. We were yeah, there. we've done a couple here in Chicago land, and then obviously Carlisle's a monster. They're doing trainings all over the place. Yeah, Not actually, Chris, about what Chuck? About five years ago. Carlisle flew us out to the state of the art facility and we got to cool. see it hands on in, in, in your new state of the art facility. Yeah, they do it right, man. They do it right yeah, out there. There's no they doubt. sure do. And I was lucky enough to be a local for a few years out there. So yeah. <laughs> I saw yeah. plenty of it. And every time I drive to my in law's house in Philadelphia, I'm always driving right past the plant. Oh, yeah. It's right. crazy. Like, oh, there it is. It's amazing out there how every roof, literally 95% of roofs over there and near the Carlisle plant. Is EPDM. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them, man. There's for sure a lot. I'm sure Carlisle would always like a couple more, but you got that right. You know how it goes. That's right. What else we got, Chuck? All right, we're ready to move on to the next segment here. Yeah, let's do it. Let's compare the times of Surewell TPO Seam Shield to the current standard cleaning method. Revolutionize your roofing experience with Surewell TPO featuring Seam Shield Protective Film. Upgrade to Surewell TPO with Seam Shield today, wow. eliminating the need for cleaning seams and guaranteeing a factory clean seam with every weld. Contact your local manufacturer, representative, or distributor for more details. Yeah, it's uh, probably the newest, coolest thing that we've got out on the streets right now. I, I really like the product. I think it, it makes a lot of sense. So basically what it is, if, if you guys are familiar with uh, the appeal film that we had on our have available on our TPO line, basically to, you, you know, you finish the job, you peel it off. You got a perfectly nice, white, clean, reflective roof, right? 
This is the same concept. It's got that release film, but it puts it on the TPO seams. So you have it on the uh, on the top side of the one seam and the bottom side of the other sheet, right? So when you overlap them and, and uh, peel that release liner off, you don't have to come back and hit it with weather membrane cleaner. It's already clean. Wow. So you're yep. saying once that sheet's laid, you could just get your robot lined up and go. You could just weld it, right? So wow. I mean, you, you guys know things get re-roofs, tear-offs, things dirty. get trashed, right? Right. Yeah. Not to mention that that dude, that uh, you know, apprentice that just kicked over the, the bucket of primer. Glue, <laughs> right. You know. Uh, so th this is like probably one of the lowest cost items that we have on the front end, and I think is I think it's very powerful, right? And, and I don't know the answer to this. You know, think about how much it ha you guys have to pay a guy to clean seams. It's it's not it's not nothing, right? No. And that seam cleaner. Do, do they have that on the rapid life as well? Uh, they don't yet. Right now, right now it's just on our uh, 12 foot and below TPO. It's available on, um, but I I think that after this takes off, after we can kind of get the demand rolling for it, I anticipate them putting it on pretty much everything. Yeah, but, I can but see right now I can, I can see all the other manufacturers jumping on as well. Yeah, it's a pretty cool idea. It's a yeah. pretty cool idea. It's kind of like a. It, it kind of reminds me of of back in the 80s and 90s when they were going from field applied tape to they're starting to make factory applied tape. And, and now we have almost all of our EPDM rolls that go out have factory applied tape on it, right? And I yep. think that down the road on the TPO side, it's going to be the same with this seam shield. I think they'll try wow. to figure it out on the PVC stuff as well. Well, that's a game changer right there. I'll tell Could you be. that. Could be, man. I think it that Well, like for, for myself at Peterson Roofman and Chuck will uh, attest to this. I mean, a lot, a lot of our jobs are either like re-roofs, either like with two inch and fully adhered or rhino bond or mechanically attached or so on and so forth. But a lot of our jobs are dirty, cut up. It's Chicago, man. Like it's, everything's dirty. There's right. trucks going everywhere, <laughs> diesel in the air, dust everywhere. Right. But I could see these rolls being tremendous where, you know, where you just, you got a nasty tear off, but then you can yeah. just pull the film, weld it. And I can just see it being great. For sure. I agree with that. I really do. All right, so we go to the next section here. Do it to it. roof it's about 55,000 square feet uh, new construction steel deck and we installed two layers of 2.6 inch insulation to meet the energy uh, code requirement of R30 and then we uh, installed that via Rhino bond with the 16 foot wide Carlisle 60 mil TPO simply more coverage per roll and less seams. The fastening pattern is not um, impacted by the wider rolls. However, in this particular job, the the owner wanted a 90 mile an hour wind rider, wind warranty, so we did increase the amount of fasteners. I would just say that our guys uh, enjoyed using them because it was just less welding. And, you know, sometimes in the summer, if you're roofing, and there's chances of rain. You, we put out a little bit and then try to cover it up. And the 16 foot sheets certainly made that, you know, more doable. Going from a 12 foot sheet, which is what we typically use to a 16 foot sheet, that's what a 33% less seams to weld. And th that's very significant. And uh, like I alluded to earlier, you're getting close to 1,600 square feet of coverage per roll, uh, which when you have a big wide open area, that, that can lead to some real production efficiencies. Most of the warehouses were EPDM up until, I don't know, 15 or 20 years ago. And now it's, uh, com in my view, completely turned to TPO. Sixteen footers. Sixteen footers, baby. Uh, biggest TPO in the world, to my knowledge. I think it is. I think it is. So, oh, yeah, yeah pretty cool product. 
unique application, right? Uh, obviously, if it's a small chopped up building, this isn't the right sheet. But if you've got a ton of square footage, you've got a little bit of room to work, man, you can really cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time. Let me ask you this, Chris. Now, yep. can a 16-footer only be rhino bond or fully adhered, or can it be mechanically attached as well? That's a good question, and I asked the same question. But right now, only rhino bond and adhered? Maybe down the road they might figure out – I mean, because theoretically, right, you could put a rust strip down the middle and do a kind of eight-foot sheet situation. You could split it in half. But they don't have right. any testing on that right now, and they haven't gone down that path. Right. So for right now, only rhino bond and adhered. But it, I do think that long term, they'll probably look at that, see if it makes sense uh, to do right. mechanically attached with a with a rust strip down the middle or something similar. But as of right yeah. now, just run up on it here. You're right. Yeah, that was a nice so. video too. They laid two two layers of two point six staggered. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. video, beautiful job. Yeah, we get a ton of positive feedback from from guys in the field with these, and uh, you know, a lot of people think or they, their first concern, right, is the the weight and the and the size of it. It's a big roll. But when you think about it, any contractor that's familiar at all with EPDM up here in the north, which is more common, right? Uh, we make a 16 and a half foot no fold EPDM roll that's about the same weight. And guys have been using that. That's one of our best selling rolls, not to mention our 20 and 30 by 100 sizes rolls. So uh, EPDM contractors that are contractors with some EPDM experience seem not to be as scared of that roll size and find they can use a lot of the same techniques to manipulate them. So um, that's been kind of really our only uh, bit of pushback. It's like, man, it seems like a big role. And it is, but, you know. Yeah, you've but got, you got, if you're already uh, yep. if you're already working with, like you said, 20 buys and 50 buys of EPDM, sure. you should already have the equipment to roll all that out. Exactly. And, it, and it's often you know? just a little bit of education and uh, making sure that you say they have the right type of equipment on hand. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's a lot of sense to me. Now, Chris, I know um, uh, what I've been finding a lot on roofs, uh, especially when I go on like uh, inspection of a new construction job. Let's say, let's say a building was built three, four years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And someone just took over the building. It got sold. They don't even have a warranty on it. They have no idea. Um, and I'll go there. It's a mechanically attached roof. There's no picture framing. There's no five foot sheets. There's no none of that. So I'm guessing it's probably a one year, you know, warranty, so on and so forth. Um, do you find that to be like a a thing in new construction where if it's not offering a 20 year NDL, because I know a lot of these GCs are just offering just one year, you know, for the roof. Mm -hmm. um, I think these guys are just smacking these roofs on. And next thing you know, that's why. People sure. like us and other good contractors up in the north got a you know very good repair log is because right. you know people aren't putting these systems on properly. Yeah, you know, I mean, most of what we deal with and see on a day to day is is NDL warranties, right? Uh, and and right. companies like Peterson that have been doing this a long time and know exactly what they're doing, right? And we, we've got a pretty solid core group of guys here in Chicago. That's not to say that we don't occasionally see some goofy stuff and yeah, it's out there, man. Right. There's <laughs> oh, it's uh, everywhere. It is. And, and we're in a constant in this business. It seems like a constant pressured race to the bottom. So if you have a building owner or developer or someone with maybe less um, actual roofing knowledge, I mean, yeah, you can see some weird stuff out there sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Chuck, you right. got we ready to move on? No, I think you pretty yep. well covered it. So I cool. can move on to the next section. The big benefit I can see to seam shield technology is is it saves the guys some time if it is a dirty job site or a re-roof or, or muddy or something like that. So like I said, the guys aren't down on their hands and knees having to, to manually clean it with, with rags and cleaner and stuff. So uh, there's definitely a benefit to, to being able to just leave that like it is, not have to worry about the dirt and the, and the mess and, and the guys just to be able to pull that plastic off, that release paper off as they're going and know that they've got a, a good clean lap to weld. For us, it's more, you know, being better for the guys to use. They do like it more. 
they don't have to get on their hands and knees as much. Uh, there's not quite as much physical labor with that part of it. So if I was talking to another contractor about about the seam shield technology, I definitely would say go for it and use it. I just think with the with the wear and tear on the guys and, and making sure that those seams and laps are 100% clean every time before you got to weld the, the two sheets of membrane together and you don't have to worry about that later on and, and wonder down the road, did we get that lap clean enough before we welded it together to know it was sealed and, and good like it needed to be. I probably sent those to you out of order or something. That one should have been back. All good. All right. Yeah. So, again, it's just echoing the feel. I think you know, they made some good points. And I like a couple of those visuals that they have where you're looking at it from like the, the roof deck side and you can just see. The glass. Yeah, that's pretty pretty cool, I think. And uh, Really cool. He, he made a couple. Hey, Chris, of let me ask yeah. you this. Go that, ahead. That new. Uh, what we just showed that new seam that that tape clean yeah, seam. seam field, yeah. Does that come on all your rolls, your tens, your twelves, your six. You can get it or? right now. Right now, you can get it on twelve and below, uh, mostly twelves and tens. Uh, I our goal is, I'm assuming, as soon as we build in enough demand for the product, because it's brand new. It's a brand new product this year. So once we've got enough demand for it, I anticipate them having it available on any all the thermoplastics. Right. PVC is a little more difficult to. Uh, yeah, nothing really sticks to it the same way that you can, you know, use kind of an adhesive to uh, TPO. So t PVC is typically a little more difficult to figure out uh, initially. Like you, you see it even with the uh, the appeal. We had a, it took us a little bit of, of time to figure out how to do appeal with with PVC. Um, we just use heat and pressure as opposed to uh, an adhesive backing like what you see on TPO. But I think that we'll have it eventually down the road on all of our thermoplastics. Right now, just 10 and 12 foot TPO. Right. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And I could see all your competitors trying to jump on it because sure. I'll be honest with you, Chris. I mean, I think Carlisle is probably the best TPO in the market, if not, you know, my top one or two. You know, um, mm -hmm. there's been so many studies out there. Some others saying, you know, Firestone, some say Carlisle, some say GAF, some say Mansville. I mean, so I really don't know what studies to trust or what not to trust. All I know is pretty much TPO's TPO and Carlisle's sheet. My guys like to work with better than mm -hmm. anything else. I know that for a fact. Yeah. And, and again, like I can only speak to the, the, the Carlisle stuff that I know. And I know they put a ton of R and D into all their products. And I know they're trying to put the best product to the marketplace that they possibly can. And the other thing that I've always really appreciated about doing business with them is that they're always innovating, right? They're always pushing, to see what the next thing is, right? What's the next step? And you know, one year it was Velcro. Now we've got Seam Shield. We've got all these different yep. tools that, on their own, one, one one by their own might not be the most most earth shattering thing in the world. But when you start to stack two or three of them into one, you know, assembly, it starts to be really powerful. Right. And, you know, it allows our allows our customers to you know, skin the cat a little bit different way, so to speak. Right. Right. Chris, let me ask you this real quick. Yeah. Have you guys gotten in, into uh, wind vented systems? We do get into wind vented systems. Uh, we've got a couple different options. We actually, Carlisle actually purchased uh, E2T from uh, Lither for Virginia Tech, right? They, they brought those guys in house over the last couple of years where that was a third party uh, kind of service that they were offering us. They, they now, they're now part of the Carlisle, Carlisle family. And yeah, we could pretty That's much offer. Enough. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Pretty much offer because we do. I mean, we do a lot of wind vented systems too using your membrane. Yeah. But the mem you know, we get the twenty year uh, labor. I mean, excuse me, material warranty from Carlisle, and then WindSmart right. yep. is the manufacturer, and they actually give the twenty year NDL. Yep. Yep. So We've been doing yes. quite, actually the roof right behind you is one of those. Oh no, kidding. By and Chuck, I mean, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what you meant. Uh, <laughs> yes. So. We definitely do, and they are not always the easiest, but sometimes they're the only solution for a particular building, right? So you've got a deck that you can't right. penetrate. You've got a ton of conduit. You've got, you know, there's right. a few other scenarios where, hey, this is like the only way to do this thing. Right. And it's, it, I, you know, if, you, if, if there's contractors out here watching this trying to get it, 
you know, wanting to get involved in it, I would say do so cautiously because yes. it can be complicated and, and you have to have attention to detail. You have to have that deck sealed. It's paramount, right? Otherwise that roof's going to be in the parking lot. Yeah. Um, it can be a really good roof and, it, and it's crazy to watch it. If you, you know, you go up on one, you watch it during a, like a higher wind. You're like, wow, it really does. It's you, unbelievable. You can see it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but you do have to have a lot of attention to detail, your penetrations, at your curbs, at your deck to walls, all those places where your air infiltration can occur into the system. Yep. There is a little bit more to it. So um, I agree with you, Chris, because we learned yeah, the hard way. I'll tell you that right now. Sure. We had uh, we put, we had put two roofs on Carlson Laboratories in Arlington Heights, mm -hmm. and they would have had to pay about one point five million in interior protection, yeah, for the building. So we came out with a Carlisle, you know, WinSmart system. But this was you know ten years ago, whatever. Sure. Uh, with WinSmart, but we like the first day we laid like I don't know, maybe two two hundred and fifty squares, give or take. Hmm. Let's just say I got a call that <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> yeah, the whole roof blew off because we didn't put in our our vents yep. properly. Yep. We didn't put it in our vents. We just we just thought, oh, let's throw some weight on it and it'll hold it. Yep. <laughs> Wrong. Didn't do it. Well, you learned, right? And then I, I bet you guys went back. And the next one you did, you're oh, very yeah. careful. Yep. Only takes now, one. Yeah, like, like, we like for instance, the one, like you the said, one you behind pay. me there got hit by a tornado and stayed in place. Mm hmm. That's the only one on that block in Joliet that stayed in place. I bet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, like you said, Chris, like if you don't know wind vented systems, like, and here's the thing too, you could put on a perfectly wind vented system and they don't tell you that they got an HVAC contractor cutting it, come in to cut in a new curb. Right. Oh man. Big problems. Yeah. So we always make sure if we bid that, but we try to stay away from it only if it's, you know, like, a very feasible option for the customer. Sometimes that's the only way to do it. Right. So that is true. That is true. <sighs> is that all? Is, do we got more clips or is that all? I think that was all the clips, wasn't it, Chuck? No, there's more. There's, there's one more. more. Some good clips. Hey, man. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank Big Mama Carla. Do a great job, Chris. Hey, they, they do a nice job. You've always done a great job of what you do, man. I appreciate that. existing assembly is 34 years old um, and as we know a typical ballasted system that's, that's beyond its life expectancy so he was ready. We installed a poly ISO insulation board. We mechanically fastened that into the structural concrete with a CD10 fastener and, uh, and then fully adhered the 60 mil TPO um, to that insulation. We were really impressed uh, with the speed and the ease of the application of the cab grip versus a, a traditional bonding adhesive. We did some time trials and, uh, and showed that it takes a lot more labor for us to manually roll out the bonding adhesive versus the cab grip, which we're hoping that will um, improve our bottom line. Only but a good Yeah, that's a you know that's a cab grip product, man. It's been a staple of our assembly. Uh, better part of the decade, and you know that's it, a that's an older video, and they just show the smaller forty pound cylinders. We now have the uh, eighty five pound cylinders as well, but man, probably an eighty percent reorder rate from our guys. Once once people try it, they like it, and they tend to roll with it. And if you think about it, one like the guy in the video mentioned. The, the spray adhesive, obviously, it's less labor than rolling out a bunch of adhesive. It, it flashes off so much more consistently than bond than traditional old school bonding throughout the temperature range. But to me, the, the, the aspects that they get overlooked is that one of those small cylinders replaces three cans of bonding adhesive. One of the big cylinders replaces six cans of bonding adhesive. Just from a loading and disposal standpoint, 
if 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 everything else was the same, which I think we can all agree that spraying is is quicker than rolling, and if you've used the cav grip at all, you know you know that it, it tacks up pretty consistently in that five to seven minute range, no matter what temperature it is outside, if the material's hot. Um, but if you even if you throw all that out the window and you just look at how many pallets you're loading onto a job site and how many pails and how much dumpster space you have to offload and and pay for it's huge man even just 100 percent. ever since you guys have came out with that and chuck will test of this chuck i don't think we've used a can of bonding adhesive in the last eight ten years yeah yeah just small repair jobs basically. yeah you know stuff sure. like that but any of our jobs that's man, we're spraying now. chris that calf grip i mean that's some special yeah, stuff i'll tell you that <laughs> It, it, it does a nice job and and yep, sure is it's been a great addition yep i like how it's what's that chuck i didn't say anything i just oh, moved sorry <laughs> my phone keeps cutting off every time i get a phone call <laughs> that's a problem oh. good problem i'm like have. i wanted to answer a couple of them chris sell a couple carlisle ropes you know what i mean <laughs> uh I hear you. Hey, I think we got one more section left on this tape, and that's yeah, about your primer. More. Oh, yeah. You got to find it. Let's see. Let's bring it up. That's very interesting. Yeah, same oh, kind well. of idea with that calf, right? Yeah. An additional benefit to using calf prime is that it will not gel, and it's impossible for it to spill. Huh. Yeah, you caught the end of the video there. So Chris, is that coming? Does that come in? I saw it was, um, you know, attached to the roller. So what does that come in? Like a backpack or? Like yeah, it's a it, it's a small kit. So it's it's a smaller, you know, propane style cylinder, kind of like the calf grip, uh, but much more manageable. I think it's I want to say it's a ten or fifteen pound. I'm not, I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's got a small backpack. It's got a hose. Uh, the wand is a little bit longer, so it's extended wand. And it's got a clip on it for a little roller, so you could go screw in the standard roller. Uh, to the base of this this wand, and, and the wand being a little bit longer allows you to stand up while you're right uh, applying. So, uh, couple those things with the fact that it will never gel and you can't kick it over and waste it. You know, it, that's huge. How many times? <laughs> How many guys kick yeah. over a can of primer on a job? You know, and there goes man. way more than you'd ever th than anyone would ever believe. It's unbelievable. Yep. yep. Same so, thing with the bonding. Or, or admit. That, same thing with the bonding, and that's where the cans with the spray. Yep. Cav grip comes in way right. better. Yep. Yeah. How many times Chuck would knock it over buckets of bonding back in yeah. the years? We're like, up oh, there goes a few hundred bucks down the drain. Yeah, and it's usually right in the middle of a roll of EPDM that's already glued down, and you got to cut yep. it off. Yeah, yeah. But you, you got to try to clean it or get rid of it too. You yeah, know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Ruin the sheet it somehow. Blow. So, yeah, I think you're you're going to continue to see Carlisle push for self-contained. Uh, type of dispensing on a variety of different products. I think it's pretty cool what they've done with the cab grip. I really like the cab prime as well. Uh, you know, what's next, right? We'll see, right. We'll see what they come out with next, but I, I would tell you it's probably going to be labor saving and it's probably going to be a self-contained. Uh, right. Hey, Chris, uh, yeah. I'm having a brain fart real quick. Um, the uh, temperature restrictions for cab grip for say, Say I'm going to put a fully here TPO down. Say it's December and it's 30, 25, 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Yeah, so we published 25 degrees and rising. Uh, the caveat being it needs to be stored at 70 degrees. So what we found is that, you know, those heating blankets are really great. And if you've got material that's already warm or hot, it'll keep it warm or hot but it's really really slow to warm to warm cold material so if you have material that was you know 40 degrees or 50 degrees and it was sitting on concrete or something like that just throwing a heating blanket up they warm about one degree per hour so you'd be yeah, there right. for a month trying to get that sucker warm right so the, the real key is to make sure that for 24 to i would say 48 if it's possible or more hours before installation they're in a you know 70 degrees plus climate yeah. controlled scenario and they're taken from that 70 degrees climate controlled situation 
put immediately in a blanket or a hot box and, you know, installed while they're still hot. Right. I think, you know, that 80, 80 degree range is pretty sweet for right. it comes out really nice. It sets up really nice. And well, even. We, well, what we try to do is work with the building owner. And yeah. Say, Look, well, yeah, we exactly. Gotta, can we store it in your building and just bring yep. it up per day? And a lot of them have absolutely no problem with sure. it. Sure. Uh, I've seen guys do massive hot boxes as well, or rotating yep. hot boxes on wheels, a whole bunch of different approaches to try to yep. keep that stuff warm. But uh, however you do it, the, the warmer, the better for calf grip, I would say calf prime, and as well as like the uh, flexible, fast, low rise foam, dual tanks, the self-contained dual tanks of low rise yep. foam. Those, those two, they, they really like the heat. So however you got to do it, keep those babies warm. Yeah. Good to know. I will say, I will say, public service announcement: Don't use the the small band heaters that can go up to like nine hundred degrees. Don't do that. That'll make gotcha. It, that can Never make it even... if you do it too intensely in one spot. So, just pub. Don't want anybody out there getting hurt. Yeah. Trying to keep no. it piece of warm, right? We don't do none of that, anyways, Chuck. Oh, so. of course not. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what else? Um. Uh, everything so this has been great this has been very informative chris it's hey been, appreciate you guys having me on this is awesome it's this uh, been fantastic man i mean you've been it's my first it's my first podcast so yeah, <laughs> yeah it's welcome, awesome man welcome we're we're, we're gonna i'm sure we're gonna you're have always you again welcome to I mean, drop in i appreciate that i'll yeah. have to i'll keep you guys on my uh on my radar and you just have to let me know when you're airing it out like i like i said pretty cool what you guys are doing here i, I think that i mean chicago's yeah. an old school roofing city i mean Here's a here's a fun fact for you guys and anybody else watching. But the the first Carlisle uh, single ply roof ever was installed here in Chicago. Really? On on, on O'Hare. Yep. First first EPDM single ply roof that was ever no done. kidding. Yep. So I would have never guessed that. Yeah. Uh, here's even one more for you. McMillan's old man's the one that the company put it down. Wow. Yeah. No kidding. No kidding. So uh, <laughs> long history Carlisle here in Chicago and. Uh, I just That's I awesome. think it's pretty neat. That is that is awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is awesome. I do say Very I do cool. say this, Chris. I do miss walking the roofs and probing seams with you and doing all that, man. Hey, I, I miss being outside. I miss kicking it with guys like you. I do not miss probing. I'm not a not a. <laughs> <of my life. laughs> I don't blame you, man. I don't blame you at all. Cool, but cool. Chris, I gotta go. I gotta go into a meeting in about good, eight man. minutes. So I'll probably leave the show and let you guys finish the show up. Awesome. Awesome to catch up. You, catch you soon. Yep. That's fine. You get at it, buddy. All right, Chris. Thanks again. And you everyone, bet. Carlisle Roofing Products, best in the market. Oh, you right. heard it here first. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. See you, dude. Talk to you, Joe. Bye. All right, Chris. Uh, you pretty well. You want to look at any of these other pictures we have? Uh, see if there's anything you got sure, to add to them, whatever you want, and, and 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 see if we have any people. We haven't really seen any comments or anything yet from any viewers. But any of you out there would like to ask Chris or me any questions? Send us a comment, and we will put it on screen and answer it for you. So we'll look at a few pictures and see where we're at uh, next. Uh, so let me see what we got here. Yeah, that's a that's a great example of a of a a passing test weld. You can see how uh, all of the mm -hmm. all of that membrane on the top side there is pull off the fleece, as opposed to splitting between mm -hmm. the two layers of membrane. That's a full full pull we call it in the, back mm -hmm. in the day. But that just means that the weld itself is stronger than the the bond of the material to itself. Like the the sheet itself, uh, the weld is stronger than the sheet itself. So that's that's a good sign. It's what we're looking for. All right, very good. Okay, I got the another picture here is processing. Be one second. Yeah, look, they got their tool looks like probably twelve inch on center beads there. I uh, I would say it's either uh, hmm, can't tell exactly which manufacturer it is, but I can tell you that it's not Carlisle. Uh, you can see the, the continuous serpentine, even beads. They've got full coverage out to the end of the boards. Insulation boards are staggered, staggered on the joints. Uh, yeah, solid, solid looking setup. They've got the the weighted roller out there, so you know that they're getting weight on it. They got the buckets out there. You know, that's uh, they're off to a good start. 
All right, here's another one. Let's see what we got here. Wow, a couple little cold wells, looks like. So yeah. you needed that, needed that seam shield, Chuck. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 and just from from my experience at Carlisle, I think the cold welds are by far the most common warranty issue or repair for warranty issue that we would see on an inspection or on an installed roof. It's just so important to to clean properly, right? If you don't have a clean surface, you can't. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Out no matter what you do. Right, exactly. All right, we got another picture here. I, all your equipment that's on the on the roof or on the on the completed roof, you all got it up on ISO, nice and soft ISO. Great, great to see that. Mm -hmm. Welding the T-joint. Oh, yeah, a little uh, couple perimeter sheets, a little picture frame action. Yeah. Tried to make sure that they weren't marked up with sheets from other manufacturers. You know, <laughs> this for you. Oh, come on. Um, Takes a little more than that to offend me, Chuck. Come on. Yeah, well, you know, it's pretty the best we can do with this. Um, no, it's, but anything else to add, Chris? Anything else you'd like to uh, yeah, say no, to our audience? Yeah, not offhand, just uh, appreciative to be involved. And, uh, you know, like I say, my, my information is all over the internet. So, if uh, mm -hmm. anyone's got any Carlisle needs, feel free to hit me up. And, and if you're really bored, there's a cool video. Um, it's on Carlisle's website. Uh, if you typed in Carlisle Derecho, I don't know if you, if you guys all remember, in 2020, there was a really nasty windstorm that went from Omaha to Chicago, uh, 120 to 150 mile an hour straight line winds for a couple hours in most places along I-80. But we talked about the rapid lock. So that's just a few Oklahoma pictures over the years. Some... And... Uh, that's another embarrassing video of me right out on the internet, but we had two schools that were in the path of this storm and, and one of them happened to be kind of like an experimental project where it had both the Velcro and the uh, standard EPDM adhered side by side in the same building and, you know, the 140 mile an hour winds, about a two hour duration, the traditional adhered system was blown uplifted rather and the rapid lock you couldn't even tell really that there were any issues so very robust system and, and we had a, that that uh video does a nice job of outlining the path of the storm and talking about some of the roofing systems that were in the path of the storm and where we saw successes and where we saw failures so worth watching yeah when you get a chance maybe send me a link to that and I'll maybe i'll even uh, add it to the show someplace and we... i'll do it one of these uh, weeks. Um, Very cool. Now you're you're always welcome. Like I said, Chris, have uh, you ever got any comments or anything? When you can drop in on any show and uh, add comments and stuff if you would like on anything that's going on. And if you see something, you think you have something to add, something good to, you can say, "Hey, I'm here in the audience. Drop me a link, sure. and I can drop you a link, and we can instantly bring you right into the show." Awesome. Well, I appreciate you having me on, and. You know, we good day to everybody out there yeah, watching. You're spending the time. Yep. Anytime, all right, man. then, Chris, we'll, we'll, we'll let you go and let you get back to all the important business you got going on. And uh, <laughs> we look forward to seeing you in the near future. You'll do it, man. I'll catch you later. Job. Thanks again. Right. Later. Bye now. Bye. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching. And... Uh, See you next week. I will probably restream this one on Thursday on our normal day since we had to stream it ahead of time. So see you all then. Thank you.